This is a tutorial on the probability of compound events. When we talk about the probability of multiple events, we often illustrate these different probabilities using a Venn diagram. This green box in front of us is a Venn diagram. The green box represents every possible outcome. The blue ellipse represents the probability or the outcomes that satisfy event A. The red ellipse satisfies all the events or the probability of event B. And this overlap in purple here is all the events that satisfy or all the outcomes that satisfy event A and event B at the same time. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say event A, that is pulling a heart out of a deck of 52 cards. Let's say event B is pulling a face card out of a deck of 52 cards. If you counted up every dot in this Venn diagram, the green ones, the blue ones, the red ones, and these purple ones, you would find out that there are 52 dots in this Venn diagram. Each one represents one card in a deck of 52 cards. All the blue and purple dots here inside this blue ellipse represent event A. If you were to count them up, you would find out that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 cards that satisfy event A. Well, event A is pulling a heart from a deck of cards, and there are 13 hearts in a deck of cards. If you were to count up all the dots in the red circle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you would find out that there are 12 cards that satisfy event B. Well, event B is pulling a face card from a deck of cards, and there are 12 face cards in a standard deck of cards. Now, in the middle here, these purple dots, these are the cards that satisfy both event A and event B. These three dots represent the three cards that are both hearts and face cards. One of these dots is the king of hearts. The other one would be the queen of hearts. And the last one would be the jack of hearts. So the three dots, again, in the intersection of these two ellipses satisfy both event A and event B, their hearts and their face cards. So now we know what a Venn diagram is. Let's just talk about some vocabulary that's common when we talk about the probability of compound events. If we say the union of event A and event B, or sometimes we'll say the probability of the union of A and B, union is represented by this U. That just means all of the events that satisfy both A and B. So we'd want all of the cards that are both hearts and face cards. If we say the intersection of A and B, or sometimes you'll see it as the probability of the intersection of A and B, and it's indicated by this upside down U, that just means all of the outcomes that are in the intersection of our Venn diagram, or that satisfy both A and B. In this case, the intersection of A and B, if we were talking about hearts and face cards, the only cards that satisfy the intersection of these two events are the King of Hearts, the Queen of Hearts, and the Jack of Hearts. Sometimes, you'll hear that two events are disjoint events, or mutually exclusive. That means that if we were looking at their Venn diagram, our ellipses do not overlap. That also means that there are no outcomes that satisfy both events. For example, 
If we said event A was pulling a 7 from a deck of cards, and event B was pulling a 9 from a deck of cards, well, there are no cards that are both 7s and 9s at the same time. So there are no cards that we can pull out that would satisfy pulling a 7 and pulling a 9 at the same time. Those events are mutually exclusive, or disjoint events. So now let's talk about the probability of two events. If we said we wanted the probability of A or B happening, well that's equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Or you can think of this as the probability of the intersection of A and B. So if event A is pulling a heart from a deck of cards, and event B is pulling a face card from a deck of cards. Well, we can find the probability. We count up all of our points. There are 52, because there's 52 cards in a deck. In event A, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 cards that satisfy event A. So the probability of A would be 13 over 52. Now we look at the probability of event B, the probability of pulling a face card. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different face cards in the deck of cards. So our probability of B would be 12 over 52. If we add these two probabilities together, we'd end up with 13 over 52 plus 12 over 52 that's equal to 25 over 52. Except the probability of A or B is not 25 over 52. Let's count up all the points that are in event A and B. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2. There's only 22 cards that satisfy A or B. So the real probability of A or B, this is 22 over 52. And the reason why we got 25 before is because when we added the probability of A to the probability of B, we counted these three items or these three cards twice. But we're not going to pull these three cards out of the deck of 52 twice. We can only pull them once. They only exist once. So that's why we always subtract this intersection or the probability of A and B happening at the same time. That just keeps us from double counting the outcomes that satisfy both events. So if we ever want the probability of A or B, that's just equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability that both A and B are satisfied, or the intersection of A and B. So what is the probability of pulling a single card out of a deck of 52 that is a heart or a face card? Well, we just did this. Remember that the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, or the intersection of A and B. Now A is pulling a heart, and the probability of pulling a heart is 13 out of 52. We're going to add that to the probability of B, and the probability of B is pulling a face card. Well, that's 12 out of 52. And then we're going to subtract the probability of A and B together. Well, that's just these 3 out of 52, so 3 out of 52. So we have 13 out of 52 plus 12 out of 52 minus 3 out of 52. All three of these fractions have the same common denominator, so we can just add and subtract our numerators. 13 plus 12 is 25, subtract 3, and we have 22 out of 52.
This reduces down to 11 out of 26. So the probability of pulling a heart or a face card out of a standard deck of 52 is 11 out of 26. If you want to put that in decimal form, that's 0 0.423 approximately. So we have a little bit over a 42% chance of pulling a heart or a face card out of a deck of 52 cards. So now let's try finding the probability of some disjoint or mutually exclusive events. What is the probability of pulling a single card out of a deck of 52 that is a face card or a 7? Well once again we can use our formula. The probability of A or B, that's equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both A and B happening. Let's say that event A is pulling a face card. So this is event A. Probability of pulling a face card from a deck of 52, that's 12 out of 52. So we found the probability of event A, and now we need to find the probability of event B. Let's say event B is pulling a 7 out of a deck of 52. Well, there are four sevens in a standard deck of cards, so our probability would be 4 out of 52. Now we need to subtract the probability that the card we pull is both a face card and a 7. Well, there are no cards that are face cards and a 7, so that would be 0 out of 52. Again, these all have the same common denominator, so we can add and subtract our numerators. 12 plus 4 is 16, minus 0 is still 16, so 16 over 52. This reduces down to 4 out of 13, so our probability of pulling a face card or a 7 is 4 out of 13, or you can put that in decimal form, and that's a little bit less than 31 percent. Now the last thing we have to talk about is the probability of complementary events. Here we have the probability of A with this line over it. This basically means this is the probability of A not happening. And the probability of A not happening is equal to 1, the 100 percent probability, minus the probability of A happening. So what's the probability of being dealt a spade from a deck of 52 cards? Well, there's 13 spades in a deck of 52 cards, so our probability would just be 13 over 52. This reduces down to 1 fourth, so the probability of being dealt a spade from a deck of 52 cards is 0 0.25. So what's the probability of not being dealt a spade from a deck of 52 cards? Well, there are 39 cards that are not spades in a standard deck of cards. So it would be 39 out of 52. This reduces down to 3 fourths. So the probability of not being dealt a spade from a deck of 52 cards is 0 0.75. Now, if you didn't want to count up all the cards that were not spades, instead of solving it this way, you could have just found the probability of being dealt a spade, which is 0 0.25, and then subtracted that from 1. And you would have got 0 0.75, or the probability that you got before when you counted up all the cards that were not spades. So that's how you can use complementary events to find probabilities of different events by finding the probability of an event not happening. And that completes the tutorial on the probability of compound events.